This is video cassette number two, the Synclavier terminal support options. All the musical sounds on this video cassette were made on the Synclavier. In the first video cassette, you saw how the Synclavier keyboard is used to perform and record musical sequences and to synthesize new sounds. This second video cassette shows you what you can do when you add the terminal support options to your Synclavier digital music system. With all the terminal support options, the terminal is the keystone of operation. After you load the operating system, you type short commands and make selections on menus to tell the Synclavier what to do. For instance, you type the play command to activate the real-time system and turn on the keyboard. Then, while the keyboard is active, you can use the terminal to examine terminal displays of your keyboard timbre, or to assign different sounds to different areas of the keyboard. Once you have recorded a sequence, you can look at it as lines of text on the terminal screen, where you can edit it easily and precisely. On the other hand, you can use the terminal to type in musical compositions using the script music language. Once you've written your composition, you can then type a command and hear the piece played. Music recorded at the keyboard or guitar or typed in at the terminal can be automatically transcribed into standard music notation. The terminal is used to display and edit the notation. A printer, of course, is used to produce the final copy. This video will give you a quick tour over all the terminal support options. For all the details, turn to Binder 2. Let's take a look at the components that will be included in your system if you have the terminal support options. The terminal in this system is a VT640 graphics terminal. Many other terminals may be used with the Synclavier, although they may not support graphical displays. Synclavier systems can be built with a variety of disk drive combinations and are available with Winchester or floppy disk drives. Most systems combine a Winchester disk, such as the 10 megabyte hard disk shown here, and a floppy drive, which is used to load the system. These drives use high-density super floppy diskettes and have a capacity rivaling a small Winchester. Many systems have two Winchesters plus a floppy. The more drives, the more storage space you will have. A tape drive, while not essential, is a very important backup. A printer is also required if you're planning to do music printing. All these options are connected to the connector panel on the back of the computer. For specific details, see the setup manual in binder 1. As you've already seen, when you press the load button, you turn on the keyboard. At the same time, you activate a series of displays or menus on the terminal screen. You can ignore these menus if you wish, as we did in video number one, or you can use them for quick access to sounds and sequences and so forth. The first display is called the welcome menu. Let's look at this carefully. This small blinking square is called a cursor. On most of the menus, you position the cursor on the item you want to select and then press the return key. To call up the first item, the timbre directory, you can just press return. This is the timbre directory. It displays eight banks of timbres. By moving the cursor to a timbre and pressing return, you can call a new timbre to the keyboard. Now hit the enter key on the far right of the terminal keyboard to return to the welcome menu. I'll skip over item B, the sound file directory, which has to do with sampled sounds. This will be described in video number three. I'll move the cursor to item C, the sequence directory, and press return. This display allows you to recall a sequence by moving the cursor to the sequence number and pressing return. This is just the same as recalling a sequence by pressing buttons on the keyboard unit. You can start the sequence by hitting the start button. Now I'll press the Enter key and return to the Welcome menu again.
this time, I'll simply type F to call up the main menu, which is simply an expanded menu with more choices on it. The main menu has a list of all the displays on the first menu, plus some additional ones. For instance, to see a visual display of the sequence we just recalled while it plays, move the cursor to item G, recorder display, and press return. With this display, you may watch the notes on any three tracks as you play the recorder. When you stop the recorder, you can edit the notes on the track immediately just by typing in new pitches, timings, or durations. Then, when you're ready to mix your sequence, you can use the multi-channel display to route your tracks and keyboard to the multi-channel outputs. Press Enter to go back to the main menu, and then H for the multi-channel display. Here, you see the default routings for the multi-channel display. You move the cursor to the track you want to reroute, and simply type in a new output number. You can also do this with the knob and the buttons on the keyboard. Press Enter and you will return to the main menu. If you are programming timbres, you will want to use the alpha timbre display. Press the F key. Here you see the alpha timbre display. With this screen, you may quickly see the values of parameters pertaining to the timbre currently on the keyboard. You may change any setting by moving the cursor and typing in a new value. Now we'll return to the main menu by hitting the Enter key. We'll skip over the rest of the options on this menu for now, except for the system commands. I'll type E to call up this display. You use these commands to call up the other software modules in the Synclavier system. So far, you have been using the real-time software module. There are many other Synclavier software modules. These commands are used to call up the other software modules. The monitor is the real center of the Synclavier software system. You can access any other module from the monitor, and you use the monitor to create, store, and recall your own work. We'll press break to call up the monitor module. The monitor is now in computer memory. You see the word ready. This is a prompt from the computer that means the monitor is ready for your commands. For instance, to go back to the real-time performance program which runs the keyboard and gives you all the terminal menus, just type the command play and press the return key. The real-time performance module is now active, but at the same time, without leaving the real-time performance system, you may use the terminal for special timbre, recorder, and keyboard displays. When you are ready to return to the monitor, press the break key. You can do this from any of the real-time menus. Remember, though, that when you hit the break key, you will lose the sequences currently in the memory recorder and the keyboard timbre unless you have saved them to disk. The monitor is now active. Remember, the monitor responds to short three- or four-letter commands. For instance, we can type a command to call up the music printing program. I'll type the command plot and press return. Here you see the music printing main menu. The music printing module is now active. This program is used to transcribe the sequence that is in the memory recorder. It has its own series of menus. We'll come back to music printing later and cover it in detail. For now, I'll just press break to return to the monitor. The monitor is now active again. You can also go directly between modules without always coming back to the monitor. For example, you can go from any menu in the real-time system directly to music printing to transcribe something you've recorded. You'll see how to do that a little later. A basic computer concept is that of the file. A file is simply a block of information stored on the disk. A file can be a letter, a composition written in the script music language, a bank of timbres, or a sequence, or a computer program. You may look at a list of files stored on your Winchester disk by typing cat or catalog at the monitor, then hit the return key. 
This will give you a list on the screen of what's in your catalog of files. There are valuable files already installed on your disk called utilities. Form copy to back up your disks and create new disks for your library. Shuffle to back up the information on your disk efficiently into one neatly organized area. Configure used to tell your computer what you have in your system. For example, the type of printer, what size Winchester, and so on. There are many convenient ways of listing your catalog. For instance, if you type cat all, you will see everything on the disk. The files with the dot in front of the name are our system files, the programs which run your instrument. They are not printed with the normal cat command. You also see the length and type of each item in the catalog in words and sectors. Under the type of file, you will see a few called SUBC for subcatalog. This is an area on the disk used for grouping related files, perhaps similar sampled sounds, so that your main catalog will not be too cluttered. You may enter any subcatalog with a simple command. Type enter. Do not press the enter key. Type enter. And follow it with the name of the subcatalog you wish to enter. Here we'll enter scriptcat. Press return. Now type cat, and you will see the script examples to be used with the script manual. To get back to the top or main catalog, type enter colon. The colon is used exclusively for the top catalog. Complete instructions for creating your own subcatalogs are in binder two. You will soon want to start working on your own files, creating your own script compositions or documents. An important concept is that the file you're working on is called the current file. It is the file that is currently in computer memory. There can only be one file in memory at a time, and since it will only stay there until you recall another file, it can be thought of as a temporary or working copy. You can save the current file on disk at any time, and then have a permanent copy of the file which you can recall into computer memory again later. There are several monitor commands which can be used to create a new current file, and to store and recall files to and from the disk. These are called file management commands. One of the commands at the monitor is the new command. If you type this now, follow it with the name of your own choosing, perhaps your own name, then hit return and you will see a ready prompt. You can now begin creating a text file. You will type in a series of lines of text, each line starting with a line number. Type the number one for line number one. Type in some text and then hit return. Type the number two for line number two. Add some more text and then hit return again. Type list and hit return and you will see your file. If you now type save, the file will be stored onto the Winchester disk permanently. Later on we'll use the old command to get the file. Type old, followed by the name of your file, and hit the return key. This makes a copy of your file from the disk and places it in the computer's memory for you to use or edit. Other monitor editing commands can be used to edit the current file. For example, to join two files, to delete some lines, and to change a certain word throughout a file. Much easier for editing, however, is the screen editor, which combines all of these capabilities with a visual display. To use the screen editor, you type the command SED. The current file I just created, saved, and recalled will be the current file under the screen editor. The screen editor is now active. It can be used to enter or edit the current file, to save it on disk, and to recall other files. The screen editor allows you to make changes and corrections to the current file, much as you would with a pencil and paper. You move a marker or cursor to the place in the text where you want to add or change something. Use the arrow keys to move the cursor up or down lines or right or left across the screen. For instance, I'll move the cursor to this word. Now I can simply type new characters and they will be inserted at the cursor. I can remove a character by placing the cursor after the character and pressing the delete key. Since the current file always shows on the screen, it is very easy to make your changes by moving, typing, and deleting. While this basic process will handle most of the changes you need to make, there are many other features in the screen editor which can help you. See the screen editor section in binder two for more details. 
You can also perform system commands, such as old and save, directly from the screen editor. Just move the cursor over to the column of letters at the left-hand edge of the screen by using the left arrow key. This is called the command column. The PF1 key on the terminal may also be used to move directly to the command column. To save your current file, type a period and then the letter R, which means replace. The editor will print a question at the bottom of the screen asking you for a file name. Type the name, then press return. The screen will indicate that the file has been saved. Similarly, you can call up a file by typing a period and then the letter O, which means old. Again, you will be asked for the name of the file. I'm going to type in the name old script 3 or SCRP3, which is a script composition on my Winchester. I hit dot O SCRP3 and here's the script composition. Bill has just recalled a file which contains a composition written in script music notation. These lines of text describe a short sequence of notes that can be processed by the computer and then played by the memory recorder. A script composition in theory can duplicate any musical input that would be performed at the keyboard. Here's a short example. The first line begins with a general tempo statement. In this case, instructing the computer as to what is the value in beats per minute of a quarter note. The next line is a key signature statement. This eliminates having to type in the accidentals for a given key signature later on. The next line is a heading for the first track or note list, instructing the computer to use the timbre located in bank one, entry number one. Following is a line for pitch, beginning with the letter P, and one line for the rhythm, beginning with the letter R. Each note must have a pitch on the pitch line and a corresponding rhythmic value on the R line. Here's a few other lines for pitch and rhythm, and uh, looks like one short one down here. The last thing on the list, the word end. This completes the note list for track number one. Since the screen editor is being used at this time, I will press the PF1 key, bringing the cursor back to the command column at the left, and perform one of the dot commands, dot P for play. This will instruct the computer to play the file, checking the text for any possible errors. And here comes the sequence. Now, the real-time performance module is active again. Only this time, from the screen editor. Before it was activated, the script composition was compiled. This means that it was checked for spelling and syntax errors, and then converted into a sequence that could be played by the memory recorder. You can return to the screen editor by pressing the break key. You are now back at the screen editor. The original text file is back in the current file. Many musicians use the terminal in a different way. Without entering a script composition, they go directly to the keyboard for recording and then use the terminal to edit the performance. You may play an empty file to simply turn on the keyboard. With the cursor in the command column, type dot n. At the bottom of the screen, you will instantly see the message, name of new file. Type in the name of a new text file and press the return key. The screen will go just about totally blank. This would be a beginning point for you if you were to create a text file totally with the screen editor. Now, however, just type dot p for play. In a few seconds, the keyboard will become active. Now I'll record a short sequence. Choose a timbre from the disk and press the record button in the memory recorder. The computer will automatically select track one and will record any notes and real-time effects you perform. The real-time performance option is now active and a sequence is in the memory recorder. If you pressed break, you would return to the screen editor and to the empty current file. You would lose your sequence. By calling up the reverse compiler, you can convert the sequence into a line numbered text file which you can examine and edit. After playing in a sequence, you should save it on the disk. Look at the timbre sequence storage area to the right of your keyboard panel. You will use the right button to store or save your sequence. Hold it down and the keyboard display will remind you to select the sequence, bank, or entry button now, and then any number from one to eight. I'll store this as sequence number one. 
After storing your sequence, hit the PF1 key. This will place you at the beginning of what is called the reverse compiler. This allows you to change your composition into text for editing in terms of time or frames, if you are scoring to television or film, or into a script format. Instructions will appear at the top of the screen showing you how to select a computer text format or a script format for your text composition. For the short sequence I've just played, I'll select the script format. Move the cursor with the arrow keys over the word computer and press the space bar. The selection will change to script. Take a note of the selection called Note Res for note resolution. This handy feature allows you to correct rhythms on a track after you have recorded the track. It becomes available when you select the script text format. I'll set the note resolution to eighth notes. When you are satisfied with your selections, press the enter key at the far right of the terminal keypad to do the reverse compilation. You are now back at the screen editor again, this time from the reverse compiler. The current file has been reverse compiled into script music notation. Here is the script text file of the short sequence I just played. Now I could change the values of the timbre definition, the timings of the notes. I could edit wrong notes or eliminate notes or tracks. Absolutely anything in the file may be changed. The first information you see is the timbre definition. If you had an afterthought concerning the structure of this timbre, you could now change the information here. Following the timbre or timbres in the case of more than one track is the note list. I'll place the note list at the middle of the screen. You can see that the smallest value of any note is 8 for eighth notes. This was the note resolution value I selected on the reverse compiler menu. The notes have been quantized or autocorrected to the closest eighth note. Since I'm still using the screen editor, I move the cursor to the command column all the way to the left and press dot P. This action will now play the sequence on the screen. Listen to the quantized eighth notes. Now remember that I stored the sequence at the keyboard as I originally played it. Now I'll recall the original sequence by pressing the sequence button and the number one. Here's my original. Now if I press the PF1 key for the reverse compiler, I can change the original sequence into a text file into what's called a computer music format which the normal or default, this is the normal or default setting for the reverse compilation. This format is used for editing music to film or video. Within this format, you may see the timings of the notes or sound effects on the tracks in terms of seconds, seconds and frames, or frames only. If you're working with frames, you can type in a frame per second rate right on the menu. I'll just press the enter key now and see the timbre definition, just as in the script conversion, but now followed by a different format for the note list. The starting time for each note is in the first column, then the note itself, followed by the note duration. You could, if you choose, do very precise editing here. Any of the text in any of the reverse compilations may be changed. If you do so and make an error, the computer will inform you of your error and refuse to play the sequence until you correct it. Now we'll return to the monitor by using the dot E command. The monitor is now active again. You may wish to take a break now before going on to music printing. The music printing option is an extraordinary tool for creating almost any kind of notation, from single instrument parts to complete orchestral scores. Recording for music printing is exactly as regular recording. But for immediate results, play along with the click track. Select a comfortable click rate and record. I'll select a number, another timbre and play a line for the chords. Select one more timbre and play a line for melody. (laughs) 
Now if I press the PF3 key, the music printing menu appears at the screen. This time, we went from real-time performance directly to music printing. This is what is called the main menu. There are other menus which may be used for setting up individual tracks, setting up graphic characters like Del Senos and Codas, your title page, and so on. The main menu is divided into two basic sections, the system commands on the left and overall parameters on the right. The section under system commands will inform you which key to press to do various commands and just how to get to the other menus for your title page and so on. The right section under overall parameters allows you to set up your composition with the basic elements. Moving the cursor with the arrow keys allows you to type in the initial time signature, a click note, what is the note value of one beat of the metronome and so on. Look at the left of the screen and you'll see that by pressing keypad one, the numbers on the numerical keypad to the right of your terminal keyboard will bring you to the score menu. Your PF1 and PF2 keys may now be used to add or delete parts totaling up to 32 staves of music. You could type in the names of the instruments here. If you need to move the part to another location on the score, you could press the minus key on your terminal keypad at the right. This would place the part in case, in this case I'll type in, let's say, the bass part here, and I would like to possibly move it uh, farther on down the page. I type the minus key, I move down farther, and simply add a part with the PF1 key, and it will add a duplication of whatever settings I might have had, the names of the parts, and so on. Returning to the main menu is done by placing by hitting the enter key at the far right. Look under the system commands for the part menu. Pressing the period on your terminal keypad will bring this up, allowing you to assign some very detailed information to an individual part. For a brief example, I could use the arrow keys again to move my cursor over to a selection and type in a new clef, initial key signature, using uppercase for major keys and lowercase for minor keys, and even set up the staff to plot two completely different tracks as two voices. Stems up for one track and stems down for the other. Just move the cursor down to any position in the lower box and press the th PF3 key. This will add room for one other voice. You may go back to just one voice by pressing the PF4 key. Press the enter key to return to the main menu. Remember, you have three ways of viewing musical notation. A display mode, an edit mode, and a hard copy for printing. Move the cursor with the arrow keys to the operation mode and press the number one at the top of the terminal keyboard for the edit mode. Press return and we begin. Here comes my flute part, here's the chords, and here's the bass part. The arrow keys move a crosshair, our cursor, horizontally and vertically across the staff. To move to the other staffs, Use the PF2 key to go down a part, and the PF1 to go up a part. You'll see your part number and name of the instrument in the lower portion of the screen whenever you're moving around. Now let's do some editing. Two rows of buttons on the keypad allow you to enter musical symbols or commands displayed at the lower right of your screen. I'll use the first button to draw a note to start a tempo statement. I'll move the cursor above the staff and press the button for the note. Now I'm getting a question from the computer that asks me what is the value of this particular note. I'll type a four for quarter note and press the return. One more question allowing you to designate which direction the stem goes. Use the up arrow for up, down for down. There's the quarter note. Now I can use the typewriter uh, keys as a typewriter to add uh, in this case, equals 120. This would also be a method for you to add, uh, add lyrics uh, for songwriting. Now I'll move my cursor where I would like, uh, let's say, for example, some dynamic markings. Under here, we'll press the M key for mezzo and F for forte. Now we'll add a slur for phrasing. I'll move to the first note where I wish to begin and press the slur button to begin 
uh, the slur at this point. Now, if I desired, I could move to some point high in the staff for the middle of the slur and press the mid button. And then finally move to wherever the slur should end. and press the button for end. Up to now, we've just been drawing on the screen. Now we'll change the sequence. For example, we could change the pitch of a note by moving to the note, here's a B flat, for example, and press the button for pitch. The computer will ask the new pitch. I'll type in A3 for A in the third octave and hit return. Adding graphics characters is instant on this terminal. To erase and redraw something like a new pitch, you would return to the main menu by pressing the Enter key. Press Return and we'll see the change. In this case, this change will also change the playback of the sequence. There's our new A natural at the end of the slur. To see more music or the next page, press zero on the keypad. Please refer to binder number two for additional editing features. Now we could press enter to return to our main menu. Another menu we have not seen yet is the page menu. With it you can set up your title, copyrights, size of paper and so on. Press number two on the keypad for the page menu. Use the up and down arrow keys to move to the title line left and right subtitles, and even a line for your copyright. At the bottom of the screen, you may enter the size of your printed page, horizontal spacing of notes, how many measures per staff, and so on. Now we'll hit the Enter key to return to the main menu. Change the operation mode to hard copy by pressing the number two at the top of your keyboard. Set up the paper in your printer and press return to print. You have now seen the monitor, the real-time options, script, reverse compiler, and music printing. There are many other ways to use the terminal that are described in Binder 2. There is also a help command that you can type at the terminal to find out about the terminal as you go. Next, video cassette number 3 will introduce you to the sample to disk system.